guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today, as you see in the title, we're making zucchini bread, but a little different twist on it. This is gonna have rhubarb and plums, only the plums are gonna be in the form of syrup. This is homemade plum syrup that I made the other day. I did not videotape this because it was quite a process. And um, anyway, these, there was almost five gallons of plums off of my coworker's tree that she gave me. And so I made 12 pints of plum syrup. And I love plum syrup. And it's so rare that we get it that I take advantage of it. Plum jam is great, but plum syrup is to die for. Uh, and I use it in my cooking. So we're gonna use this pint jar of plum syrup in our muffins. So we're doing a zucchini rhubarb plum muffin and or, and or you could use this and do a sweet bread so and I might do a loaf of sweet bread as well so get the seeds out of your zucchini because I let it get a little bit big you're gonna need salt <coughs> baking soda baking powder uh, rhubarb zucchini flour and sugar and uh, some fresh eggs from the girl. So as I put it in here, and we're gonna need a little bit of oil. So as I put it in the mixing bowl, I'll bring you in for a different angle and let you see how I put this together. Let me get this grated up though and we'll be ready to rock and roll. And it goes so easy. Preheat your oven to 375. Get a pencil while I'm doing this and write it down and um, I'll bring you along. All right guys, if you like these videos, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Cause you know, I'm trying to bring you some new and different stuff you haven't seen before. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our bowl here ready to go. I've got about a third of a cup of oil and you can use the oil of your choice. Um, I chose a safflower oil. I'm gonna put two eggs in here from the girls, either room temperature or fresh out of the coop. That's, these happen to be fresh out of the coop so they're nice and room temperature. Actually a little warmer than that, but that's okay. And we're gonna go ahead and cream our sugar and our eggs together, if that makes sense. And so we're gonna need three cups of sugar. That was a little shy. Look at these pretty measuring spoons. What a nice gift that was, thank you. If you're watching, thank you, thank you, I love them. This actually means more than having pretty measuring cups. Um, this gift meant a lot to me, so just so you know. Okay, so I'm not gonna add more than that just because my plum syrup here, um, it has sugar in it, it's sweet. I don't make it overly sweet, but I do make, uh, you gotta have sweet syrup. Okay, pop that lid. Go ahead and pour that whole two cups in here. This makes a big batch. So like I said, we can do muffins or we can do muffins and a bread and we'll probably do a loaf um, to go along with it. Let me scrape that out of there. And all that, my mouth is watering because I know how good this is. Unbelievable on pancakes and waffles. And I would have brought you along for this, but it was quite a job. It was almost five gallons of plums that a coworker gave me. And I needed to just get busy. I cooked them all down in just uh, water. And then I went ahead and uh, put them through the Victorio strainer and strained it all out till I got it nice, uh, nice amount of juice, if you will. So I'm gonna bring my mixer on over here and go ahead, get my bowl in place and lock the lid down. I'm not gonna use any vanilla in here because I want the plums and the rhubarb to stand out. Let's get that all creamed together. On. I'm gonna go ahead and add a teaspoon heaping teaspoon of baking powder, a not so heaping teaspoon of baking soda. And this recipe is so forgiving. It's not like 
you're going to mess it up. Although, I have been known to do that, so you never know. You just got to... Okay, we've got that all incorporated. Let's add our salt. And you want a good teaspoon of salt to that. Like I said, no vanilla. And now that we've got it pretty well mixed, and hopefully you can hear me well, uh, we're going to go ahead and add our flour. So I'm going to unlock the girl here. Look how pretty and pink this is. <gasps> it's going to be so pretty. So I'm not going to measure the flour, but it's going to be close to four cups. So we'll say one. We'll start out with two, three, but it's really close to four cups and I'll show you what I'm looking for. I want a thick cake batter, thick or sweet bread batter. And if you've not seen that, I'll show you what I got in mind while we're working. So whoop, pulling together just perfect. And it's going to depend on the humidity in your air. Um, it's going to depend on a lot of things, but this is so pretty and I just love it. Okay, so let's look at that now. See what our consistency is. So you got a pretty thick batter um, and it kind of stands up and lays on top. That's pretty close, but I'm going to go ahead and add another mm, healthy half cup of flour and I'm going to add in, you want two cups of um, rhubarb. So here's one cup and that um, rhubarb, or not rhubarb, <laughs> zucchini, I've got rhubarb on the brain. Um, that zucchini did about three cups, just that half a zucchini. So I'm going to go ahead and get that mixed in and then we'll fold in our rhubarb. Lock it down and just quietly fold and we'll see your mixer should struggle a little bit for this, which it's doing just a tad. And pink and green are probably one of my favorite color combinations, so this really is pretty. And I think I'm going to chop up my rhubarb just a little smaller so it's tiny and bite size. So I'll bring you back when we're adding rhubarb. Okay, as you can see, we've got our batter is done. And I don't want to have the mixer on to fold in the rhubarb. So I cut it up kind of small into little chunks because I want each muffin to have, you know, I don't want a big giant chunk. And the reason you need this batter as thick as you do is it's a sweet bread and they are thicker batters, but um, your vegetables, which rhubarb is a vegetable, even though we always pair it, well, not always, but we, we pair it with sweets, um, it is a vegetable. So there you go. Now we're gonna add a cup and a half, a cup and a half of pretty, you know, little pieces um, like these little pieces here of rhubarb, fresh rhubarb. And I picked this yesterday and then I uh, went ahead and put it in the refrigerator, got it all cleaned and washed in. Look how beautiful these muffins are. And I only get to, like I said, I only get to have these once in a while. And when I do, it's such a treat. Now you can freeze these, which I may make a batch and freeze them for the holidays, but I will have rhubarb in the freezer, I'll probably um, either buy fresh organic zucchini or I'll freeze some of my own and you just drain off the moisture and use it. Or you could just do rhubarb and plum um, bread, if you will. Okay, so now we need to get it in our muffin tins. Oh my goodness, okay. I'm super excited, can you tell? <laughs> Let me get the camera moved around here and get our muffin tins. I guess I don't need to move the camera, just get everything in place, right? So you wanna fill your muffin cups about, just like you would a cupcake, you know, two thirds of the way full, three quarters of the way. We don't mind if we get a muffin top. This is the one and only time muffin tops are okay. <laughs> oh, these are gonna be gorgeous. 
And this is a big batch. It makes a lot. So like I said, I'll probably do some bread too. I just, um, my bread pans, uh, I'm gonna have to wash them while these are in the oven because I just made a sweet bread that was to die for. I just, I've got this new hammer guys and I wanna know how you guys like it. Is it, you know, is it better quality for you? Um, I've been trying to get video done with it and something keeps coming up and I either, I don't have it turned on or I don't have the mic on or something. Learning curve. Okay, and I only have little muffin tins because I rarely make muffins. So um, I've got two little sixers. So we'll have a dozen in the oven. And I could do mini muffins, um, little muffin bites if I wanted to um, for this, but I think you're gonna want one all to yourself. So there we go. And my coworker, Ellie, who gave me the plums, I wanna send some of this, these home with her for her husband because they were the ones who had to pick the plums and then drop them off. And that was just, what a blessing. So anyhow, there you go. Okay, we're gonna put these in a 375 degree oven until they have, uh, you can put a toothpick in and it comes out clean and they're a little golden brown on top and I'll bring you back. I'm probably gonna load up some bread, all right? I'll be back. Okay guys, so it's finally done and I've got this beautiful uh, plate of muffins. Uh, this made 23 muffins and this one's a little shy. So, you know, good healthy 22 muffins and one loaf pan. And this is my Lodge um, cast iron loaf pan. Look how beautiful that is. Um, I'll leave a link to these pans. These are fantastic. I'm gonna let that cool until the bread actually shrinks away from the sides a little bit. But I'm gonna go ahead. These have had a little bit of a chance. I don't time things. I literally give it 10, 15 minutes look. If it looks like it's getting brown, then I go ahead and stick a wooden skewer or toothpick in and let it come out clean. And so I'm gonna go ahead these papers. It's still really hot, actually. <laughs> these are not that cool, but look it. Okay, here we go. Mmm, look at that. Oh, so good. Well, smells delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of a bite, and you can peel that right away. It's all golden brown, kind of a pink and green, which I love. I just want a little bite to begin with. Mm. Oh, it's sweet, but not too sweet. Still has a little tart. Look at that texture. It's delicious. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh, and it's healthy. It has two vegetables. So, a vegetable in every serving. <laughs> mm. Little crispy around the edges. Perfect texture in the inside. So I highly recommend these. I make these every time I get plums and I always have rhubarb. And uh, um, I, I truly hope that you try this recipe or this idea. You can change it any way you like. And as always guys, I can't wait to see you next time. I hope you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber, you know, you can come back and see cooking, canning, gardening, uh, and um, some more of these. Mm -hmm. And then now is the question, to glaze or not to glaze? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Would you glaze this or not? And if I was going to glaze this, I would make a plum glaze for this, just to accent the plum. But I think I'm going to leave them plain and save everybody the extra calories. <laughs> All right, guys. I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and check those links below because I'll have a link for the iron, I'll have a link for mm, maybe even a KitchenAid mixer because eventually I'm going to need a new one. This one's, gosh, it was our friend who's almost 40 
um, his grandmother's. So it's, it's an old workhorse and we'll probably need a new one someday. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.